Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Raymond Young. Here are tonight's top stories. Authorities warn of a rebound in COVID cases after Easter as primary school children prepare to return to classes tomorrow. China's economy grows by 4.8% in the first quarter of the year, beating expectations. And concerned groups call on the government to enhance public education following a high-rise escape by a cat. Hong Kong's daily COVID caseload continues to go down with just over 600 infections. But authorities warn of a small rebound after the Easter holidays. Chloe Fong reports. Hong Kong has reported another 613 COVID infections as cases declined for the sixth consecutive day. More than 300 patients were detected through PCR tests, while another 297 came from the RAT self-reporting mechanism. The rest were imported cases. There were another 17 COVID-linked deaths in the past 24 hours. Fatalities from the fifth wave are now approaching 9,000. A 10-year-old girl has caught the attention of health authorities. She returned to Hong Kong from Canada via Tokyo on the 5th of this month. She completed quarantine with negative results, but was found to be positive at a community testing center yesterday, 12 days after her arrival. Albert All of the Center for Health Protection said re-positive patients are not especially high risk, and there is no need to adjust the quarantine period for now. Meanwhile, the hospital authority will be reserving slots for children at its 23 designated clinics from tomorrow, when primary students return to school. Parents can also make use of the designated taxi service to take their children to the clinics. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. An early summer break for Hong Kong's primary and secondary students is coming to an end as they gradually return to school for face-to-face -face lessons. But both students and parents are stressing out on a new requirement of self-testing for COVID every day. Joanna Ho reports. After almost three months, primary students can finally greet their friends again when they return to school for lessons tomorrow. Under the latest guidelines, students are required to self-test for COVID every day before heading back to campus. That gave Cherry mixed feelings. The primary six student said while she is excited about meeting her classmates, she was overwhelmed with the COVID tests. I feel maybe nervous. I feel annoying because I need to do the test every day. Although Cherry felt tired of the test, she pledged to adhere to the rules to protect her peers. If I do myself, I will do the steps wrong. So my parents will help me to do, will help with me do the test. Her father said he will supervise the procedure for a few times and after that she'll be on her own. Apart from the extra time in the morning, he felt the biggest burden going forward will be the money spent on the kids. While the government is giving out 10 million kids to needy families, they could not meet the keen demand. That prompted a food delivery enterprise to take matters into its own hands. The Chen Quan O food delivery team has collected around 2,500 kits from customers over the Easter weekend and will start distributing them to students tomorrow. Our team think that some families may not have prepared enough RAT test kits and also may cause financial burden from of parents. They can donate their remaining COVID tests to our specific restaurants or give us when they place food orders. 
People who wish to donate extra kits can drop them off at half a dozen restaurants for the rest of the month. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. John Lee has been confirmed as the only valid candidate in the chief executive election. The decision was announced by the Candidate Eligibility Review Committee this afternoon. The former chief secretary enters the one-horse race with 786 valid nominations. Lee still needs the endorsement by over half of the 1,500-strong election committee members on May 8 to win the top post. He met more industrial and commercial representatives today and pledged to publish his manifesto as soon as possible. China's economy expanded by 4.8 percent in the first quarter, surpassing expectations. But widespread COVID lockdowns since March threatened to extinguish the momentum in the months ahead, as retail sales and unemployment both worsened. Chloe Feng tells us more. In his quarterly press briefing, National Bureau of Statistics spokesman Fu Linghui revealed the latest report card for the world's second largest economy. China's gross domestic product grew by 4.8 percent year on year between January and March, beating expectations. It also surpassed the 4 percent growth registered in the previous quarter. Faced with multiple tests of increasingly grave and complex international environment and the COVID-19 situation at home, the national economic recovery was sustained and the operation of the economy was generally stable. Industrial production, which refers to activities in manufacturing, utilities and mining sectors, grew by 6.5 percent in the first quarter. Fixed asset investment, a key economic driver, went up by 9.3 percent, reaching 10.5 trillion yuan. Investment in high-tech industries even recorded a 27 percent jump. But recent large-scale lockdowns triggered by COVID outbreaks may soon reverse the upward trend. Retail sales saw the biggest contraction on an annual basis last month, falling 3.5 percent. But sales for the quarter still grew by 3.3 percent, eclipsing 10 trillion yuan. There are also varying signs in the job market. Unemployment rate in March rose by 0.3 percentage points to 5.8 percent, the highest level since May 2020. With the economic disruptions dragging into this month and possibly May, pressure is piling on the central government to keep its annual growth target of 5.5 percent. Forecasters said that the goal will be hard to meet without a massive stimulus package. To spur growth, the People's Bank of China only slashed its reserve requirement ratio to 2.5 percent on Friday. Chloe Feng, HKIBC. Overseas, at least five people were killed and 13 others wounded amid intensifying shelling at Kharkiv. Ukraine's second largest city. Russia claimed that it has struck over 300 targets across the country overnight. Sarah Wong reports. Contrary to claims that it will only seek to liberate the southeastern Donbass region, Russia continued bombarding other parts of Ukraine. A barrage of rockets rained down on Kharkiv in the northeast, killing at least five people and setting apartment buildings ablaze. Amid the ruined and the danger, rescuers tended to the wounded, many of whom lying helplessly on the streets. As firefighters doused one blaze, another was set alight. While Russia has no immediate plans to capture Kharkiv, Shelling the city can constrain Ukrainian forces there and allow its own troops to advance in the east. But Russian missiles traveled as far as the western region close to the border with Poland, with the governor of Lviv urging residents to take shelter. 
Russia also struck military targets around the capital Kiev and Mykolaiv in the south, in an apparent retaliation for the sinking of its missile cruiser. Meanwhile, Ukrainian soldiers in besieged Mariupol had vowed to stay put and fight on after an ultimatum to surrender had passed. The strategic port city is on the cusp of falling into Russian hands after enduring two months of near-constant bombardment. Russia is reportedly planning to restrict access to Mariupol and movement within, where around 120,000 civilians are believed to be still trapped. President Vladimir Zelensky accused Moscow of aiming to wipe Mariupol and other Ukrainian cities off the face of the earth. In a thinly veiled appeal to Germany, he urged countries with weapons and ammunition to help bolster Ukraine's defense. Over in the Vatican, Pope Francis appealed for world peace during the Easter prayers and hoped the senseless war in Ukraine will soon come to an end. I milioni di rifugiati e sfollati interni, le famiglie divise, gli anziani rimasti soli. May there be an end to the flexing of muscles while people are suffering, the pontiff pleaded. Please let us not get used to war. Sarah Wong, HKIBC. Finally tonight, while cats are said to have nine lives, a feline from Qingyi may have only eight left after surviving a hairy episode this morning. A concerned group said the accident is common in Hong Kong and called on authorities to better educate pet owners. Joanna Ho reports. It was possibly the worst nightmare for cat owners. A woman alerted emergency services early this morning after finding her furry companion missing. It turned out the cat had escaped from the window of a 24th floor unit in Cheonghong Estate, but was lucky enough to have landed on an air conditioner one floor below. Firefighters and SPCA officers arrived at the scene and eventually brought the animal back to safety. While there was a happy ending this time, a concern group called on cat owners to do their part to prevent accidents. I'm sure the cat will be quite uh, was quite panicked as 23rd floor is quite high. And according to the vi uh, video, I can see the owner has placed a window grill, but not cat specific, uh, which is therefore easily for the cat to jump out of the window. Ng explained that cats are sensitive creatures and will react to the slightest noise such as the sound of birds outside the window. While owners could be prosecuted for animal cruelty, she said it was difficult to impose laws to keep cats and dogs safe. I think making law or legislation will be great, but uh, it will be quite difficult for them to enforce. And it is diff uh, hard for government to check um, like any cat places from time to time. Ng suggested authorities collaborate with animal welfare groups to teach owners how to keep their pets safe. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. On to the weather now. Mainly cloudy with one or two showers tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 19 and 22 degrees, rising to a maximum of 27 degrees on Thursday when the sun should return. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Monday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Raymond Young. Thanks for watching. Good night.